A ban on Muslims would not have stopped this attack. Neither would a wall. I don't know how one builds a wall to keep the internet out. She's in total denial, and her continuing reluctance to ever name the enemy broadcasts weakness across the entire world. True weakness. The Orlando massacre revived the debate between Trump and Clinton this week over how they would fight the war on terror. And we're back now with the panel. Amy, a couple of segments ago, we talked with Senator Sessions about how Trump's poll numbers are dropping. One of the few areas where he leads Clinton is on the issue of who would be better to take on and, and, and defeat ISIS. But on the other hand, this also plays into Clinton's attack on Trump as being unfit not having the temperament to be president. So how do you see the attack in Orlando and the growing fear about terrorism cutting politically in the Trump-Clinton race? Well, it is an interesting dichotomy, and I, don't, I think voters overwhelmingly, when they look to see who they want to vote for president, they don't go down a checklist and right. go issue by issue. This person's better on this, this person. They just have a sense of which person they think could do the job and is fit to do the job. And I think that's obviously why Hillary Clinton is trying to make the issue, not that just that he's unpredictable, but that he's dangerous, that his, he doesn't have the temperament or the judgment. The thing is, there's a very strong case to be prosecuted against the Obama administration and Hillary Clinton, their role in the last eight years in dealing with ISIS and dealing with Syria and dealing with Libya. But instead of being focused and disciplined on this message, where Donald Trump goes is he talks about the Muslim ban, he gets in fights with these candidates, he is even dividing his own party about this issue, about how do you deal with this issue of a Muslim ban. And so there's nobody there making that case. There's no, it's not just the Trump campaign. He has no surrogates doing this. There is no money being spent on television ads doing this. There's no super PACs defending him and doing this. He's literally an island among himself. Uh, Unto, unto himself, thank you, unto himself. <laughs> and there's no reinforcements that he's getting. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is making the case every day, and her allies are making the case every day, both on television and in focused, direct messaging to, to voters. Uh, Brent, I'd love to continue on this, this same issue, because on the one hand, you know, as, as Amy says, to the degree that, that uh, you have these terror attacks, that ISIS is still on the march, you can make the case against Obama and indirectly against Clinton as his, as, as his Secretary of State. On the other hand, as we went through with Senator Sessions, you know, here we have this terrible tragedy, and Trump is talking about what else Barack Obama has in mind. Exactly right. And it's worth noting here, Chris, that in every campaign cycle, general election cycle, there are moments when the candidate gets a fresh look from the voters. And when you lock up the nomination is one such moment. These moments are few, and you can't afford to waste them. And there'll be a few more. But Trump had one, and he finished, you may recall, he wrapped it up before she had. So he had some open country there and an opportunity to, you know, get people to take a fresh look at him. A disciplined, active, well-planned campaign focusing on the issues that, that could broaden his appeal would have helped him. And as Amy just pointed out, he hasn't done any of that, really. I mean, he's he's undisciplined. He's all over the place. You know, he gets in this fight over the over the over the ethnic background of, of a federal judge that has to do with a with a case involving Trump University, totally unrelated to the campaign. Uh, you know, he overstates the case against Obama by suggesting the president may be somehow sympathetic, possibly uh, to the bad guys and all the rest of it. And it's and it all adds up to a wasted opportunity and an opening. For Hillary Clinton, who has moved aggressively, her camp it's very hard to think about what her campaign is really about. Right now, it's about, I'm not Trump, and you don't want him, and it, may, and it looks as if it's working. George, I want to flip this a little bit to something else we talked about with Senator Sessions, and that's that Trump was not just fighting with Clinton and Obama this week. He was also fighting with his own party. And he, at one point, he basically said he could walk away from the party. And as we showed in the clips of McConnell uh, and Paul Ryan, they were talking about walking away from him. Can Trump win without the RNC and, and the infrastructure in terms of field organization, money, database that the RNC has built? I think we're going to find out. I like Amy's use of the metaphor uh, as an island. Turns out John Donne was wrong when he said no man is an island. Trump is an island and <laughs> delighted to remain so, evidently. This week, Governor Hogan of Maryland joined the list of those who said... Republican Trump, governor. Republican governor. Jeff Flake, a senator from Arizona, a Republican who's resistant to Donald Trump, points out Trump got 13 million votes in the primaries. 
he'll probably need 65 million votes to win the presidency. Where is he going to get the other 52 million? That's a lot of votes. Uh, Donald Trump's assumption clearly at this point is that running in a primary against 16 opponents is pretty much the same as running in a protracted general election against one well-funded, tough Democratic machine. That's unlikely because what the Democrats have is a get-out-the-vote mechanism, that this is going to be a mobilization election, not a persuasion election. There aren't that many Americans waiting to be persuaded on either side. So if he doesn't have a get-out-the-vote mechanism, what does he have? What he has is crowds. And like a real amateur in politics, he seems to confuse the enthusiasm of the crowds in front of him at the moment in a high school auditorium with the larger electorate, whereas in fact crowds are definitionally a not representative selection of the American people. You know, one, it's not as if Hillary Clinton isn't a vulnerable candidate herself. Uh, her unfavorable numbers, they're not 70 percent, but they're 55 percent. She's got a criminal investigation going on and on at the FBI uh, to the degree that you're not happy with Obama policies. She can be held responsible for those. And yet, to the degree that they make this a referendum on Trump, not on her, those issues may not come up. That's exactly right. So it's a matter of don't vote for the other guy. I thought Britt was on target here. It's about Trump. So we can talk about Hillary Clinton's deficits, but in fact, right now, all the emphasis, all the analysis, all the public attention is on Trump. And he's, you know, at least from my perspective, an unattractive alternative. So you say, well, who else is in this race? It's not 16 other people, as George was saying. It's one person. So the alternative to save us from Trump is then Hillary Clinton. And among Republicans, Ryan's in a tight spot. He says, this guy's practicing textbook racism. And then he says to his Republican colleagues running for Congress and the Senate, oh, just rely on your conscience. But the base is going to say the establishment didn't back Trump, and that's why he lost. And they will blame Paul Ryan if Trump loses. So tr I think Ryan, McConnell, all those guys right now are trying to, like, just look the other way. But less than a minute, Amy. It, it, the frustration is so much, and I, it's, look, it's just a handful. We're talking about 30 people. Some Republican convention delegates are saying, let's go to Cleveland, let's change the rules, let's unbind everybody and have a free vote. Has that got any chance? I, I think it would tear the party apart much more so than it is now. I do not understand how that would help anything other than... Uh, you mean the idea of 13 million idea people of, vote for this guy? Exactly, and, gonna... and then you take it out from... And also, if you think that Donald Trump's just going to walk away after that and go, oh, you're right, you guys, yeah. uh, you, you, uh, I, I didn't get the nomination, I'm just going to go sit here quietly, <laughs> give me let's, a break. Let's see what happens if Hillary's lead grows to something between 15 and 20 points. I think that would change the atmosphere dramatically. So I doubt it will happen, but it's possible. Thank you, panel. See you all next Sunday.